Sure. So, shall I start, Mr. Bishwam? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, sure. Thank you so much, then. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, namaste, Adab, and Vanakkam. Namaskara. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, I'm really happy that uh, I'm taking this uh, topic. And uh, when I come across uh, most of my clients who are with the experience of one year till 15 to 20 years of experience and usually they come across with different issues related to like interpersonal skills or they, they say that we can't manage or cope up the day-to-day -day activities whatever happens at workplace and many things are there and in that usually I find you know the stereotypes or the leadership styles what happens when it is for male or female uh, more or less we could be able to see that and uh, today to start with uh, on stereotyping and leadership style first I would like to give you the overview uh, like what are we going to understand discuss today uh, as you know that it is a really a wide topic it is and if I, if I start you know discussing on this it may take hours together so we'll make a agenda the clarity that what all we are going to discuss today so that we do not get deviated and at the end of the session the thing should be clear that whatever the agenda it is so that we can achieve it. The first thing uh, today we are going to understand the meaning of stereotype, gender role, so wh what exactly what exactly the stereotype means and uh, how it is related to gender especially what happens there in terms of masculine, feminine and followed by that will be focusing on perception and process and attributes to perception. So usually the perception is the first part like you can say it starts when you start perceiving, when you start collecting some information on that basis gradually the stereotype it builds. So after knowing stereotypes we will come to perception and towards concept of self-fulfilling prophecy it is very wonderful uh, topic it is. Uh, where you're going to understand a lot of things. W what are the ways like why we really you know get carried away or we focus on few things most of the time. Then followed by that a video, the trouble uh, with women which we're going to watch. So here I'll be sharing you the link and you'll be watching it on YouTube. And after that we'll be discussing what women leaders and their competencies. So here we'll be discussing what poor uh, you know CEOs of 500 fortune companies and at the end the learning so what all we're going to we have learned so far with the help of this all this you know overviews so uh, in order to start uh, stereotyping first uh, I would like to ask you something so in the next slide I'll be asking you you need you are supposed to find out the gender with the help of this traits or qualities So here you need to identify the gender, an executive who is a warm, family oriented, highly sensitive and not able to move the mouse. Yes, uh, highly sensitive to the opinions of others, uh, somewhat indecisive, yet very supportive. So with this, when you go through this, you know, traits, what exactly strikes in your mind? Is it a male or a female? So whatever it is, just make a note of it. So here, it can be either female or a male. So if most of you have wrote as female, then probably it describes your stereotypes. If it is male, so once again, what all the stereotypes you have? So we can't say that these these are the qualities or the traits are limited to a male or a female. So my friends, now 
with this i hope like you got an idea like what exactly uh, i am talking about in terms of stereotypes a uh, few of you are not aware of what the uh, stereotypes are so this is what uh, the overall agenda is here each of us we have some you know uh, views like if someone is doing like this or if he has certain qualities or traits so we feel that or we make a decision that this, this is what it should be so here we are focusing more on gender so next thing is we'll be understanding what uh, what is stereotypes are exactly so what are stereotypes so stereotypes are beliefs that associate groups of people with certain traits so always we have some beliefs we have some you know thoughts views that if something someone is doing like this or someone is behaving like this yes we'll arrive with some conclusion we'll tell that this is what they are so it it refers to what we believe or think about various groups they can be good or bad so there is nothing as such like it is good or bad so yes so for example here we can see one example one might stereotype older people as wise or as slow so always it depends from person to person on their views so there is no right or wrong or there is no good or bad in this but always we have certain stereotypes certain beliefs in your mind in a similar way you can see fat people have been stereotyped as jolly or as lacking in self control so here once again we have some beliefs if someone is fat they might be jolly or someone may think that yes they may lack in their self control they can't control themselves so usually we feel that most of the time what uh, we have seen and through research so far stereotypes are sometimes difficult to change once we have those mindset or stereotypes we feel that this is this, this is what it is and we start believing in that and uh, further we'll focus on what are those you know, different kinds of stereotypes so there are four basic kinds of stereotypes so the first is personality traits so usually women are expected uh, to be passive or submissive like always we feel that yes the women means they should be passive polite submissive gentle right but when it comes to well men like always we expect that they should be aggressive strong more of pushy means we we categorize that and it happens with all our experiences so in a similar way in a similar way you can say domestic behavior so domestic behavior always like when it comes to say looking after kids so yes it is meant for women but when it comes to say it might be something related to fixing some things at home or something related to you know electronics or mechanical machinery part or someone has to repair car so we folk we expect that it should be done by men so this is uh, second uh, you know basic you can say kind of first gender stereotype and third is occupations so occupations so once again when it comes to that uh, recently still recently like it was very limited to say in terms of nursing profession or in terms of say securities like yes it should be done by women and whereas in terms of construction or mechanical engineering for men but now the things are changing a lot and the fourth is physical appearance so physical appearance always always once again we expect like women to be small graceful or once again soft but whereas men yes tall or in terms of you can say shoulder broad shoulder with well physique so this is like this what happens so uh, the reason why we are focusing on this basics of stereotypes is once you have this idea it will be easier for you in terms of your workplace and in your day to day life usually i call it as personal life and your professional or work life so whatever we are in your personal life most of the time we carry the same thoughts 
and we project it in a work life most of the time. So uh, gender stereotypes it is not like something limited to personal life or work life. So we always we wherever we get the opportunity or wherever we, we get the chance to just understand someone else to understand the situation on our basis of the experiences. So usually we do this. So out of these four basics of uh, kinds of you know gender stereotypes. So regarding personality traits, domestic behavior, occupation, physical appearance, any of this, if you start recalling, just you can relate this. Yes, sometimes I did. Usually I do uh, whenever I need to you know understand someone else. This is what happens. So friends, now the further things we can focus on now gender. So what happens with this in terms of specific to it? So what are the gender roles? So here, gender roles are the way people act and what they do and say. So here, as I discussed earlier with regard to say in terms of uh, personality traits or physical appearance, gender roles vary greatly from one culture to the other culture or from one ethnic group to the other or in terms of social class. So for say, who are in middle class or you know upper middle class or you know higher or rich class, we can see, so always there will be some gender roles. And when it comes to say, in terms of gender roles, it may further, like uh, you can say, there will be some norms or there will be some expectations like how one should behave, what one should wear when it comes to more with the class, culture and ethnic group. So always there will be some fixed expectations, like this is one has to. Now further, children learn gender roles from an early age like it what ha happens with all of us is whatever we learn start from the childhood so this is what we're going to you know uh, you can say whatever we have learned so far we try to gather more information we start believing it if something happens as per our expectation we'll feel that this is what it is so always we carry that belief sometimes it may work or it may not but still we believe and we carry that. So here, uh, children can learn from parents or from family, religion, culture or outside world. It might be in terms of environment, media and you know it should be like at, in the early age everything will be like you can say expected. So if there's a kid, yes you are supposed to, if he's a, a child in terms of say male, yes you are supposed to wear this, you are supposed to play outdoor with guys and something which is already you know expected you can say according to the norms but when it comes to for girls yes it is more of say playing with a doll you should be at home most of the time and you should tell like your parents if you're going out with someone else or if you're going out alone means always there will be some expectations so this is what male has to do and female has to do girls and boys when it comes to that so this is what happens friends when it comes to the stereotypes formation what all we have learned so far we continue with that hope you now you are getting that idea so whenever you see in your surroundings or if it is happening with you like stereotypes if you feel that there is a colleague or your seniors or your subordinates you have some you know limitations so okay someone has joined for oh, this work they may not do or I think my senior is he, he does so and so or he is doing like this means always we have those expectations and this is what happens here actually we have been stereotyped and we don't know whether it is true or false but still we believe that so now we should know like how it differs for men and women in terms of you know gender roles so when it comes to say femininity like words commonly used to describe femininity like you can say it is dependent emotional passive so always we see that women are always dependent they can't do on their own they can't be independent 
and we feel that yes they has to be dependent on someone else in terms of their life like yes they can't uh, lead their own life yes they require someone and worlds like at the age of say 21 or 23 or 25 yes they should get married so this is what happens after that once again they need to look after their you know a life like in terms of husband and in terms of future it will be kids or overall in laws so this is how we usually we categorize then in terms of masculinity yes so always yes men are independent non emotional aggressive tough skinned competitive if someone is not doing this yes we will have certain stereotypes we will start projecting which we start expecting like why why it is so lots of why will come well so now with this stereotype hope you are now clear with this now we'll understand how exactly we form stereotypes so here everything is boils down to perception whatever you're going to sense first thing is like in terms of sensing so we have five senses in terms of say eyes nose in terms of your tongue skin and ears so when it comes to eyes yes visual visual sensation in terms of nose all uh, you can say olfactory and tongue gustation you taste it auditory and in terms of sense so with this five senses we understand lots of things lot of many things okay and further on that basis we form a perception so if if you smell something which is a aroma of say dry you know fruits or or if you feel like you know you are feeling uh, something aroma of biryani so like you will store that and next time whenever you get that aroma yes you'll say someone is cooking biryani right so in a similar way from each and every senses what all the information we get we start storing with that and accordingly will form a perception so whenever someone is cooking and you are means if you are getting that aroma yes someone is cooking a biryani right in a similar way now will be understanding more when you form that perception what happens okay so first we'll understand more once again about perception here so the perception is like the procedure by which we try to gather and interpret information about the environment that surrounds us means what all i discussed so far so in terms of what all we have gathered to different senses that information we interpret it in our own way right and accordingly will form a belief for that and if that belief we are believing it or we are using it again and again it it, it gets converted into stereotypes so here in terms of say perception process so the first is like perception process it's a feedback about ourselves and others and not always based on true picture of reality and we behave as though our perceptions are real like sometimes you may say that yes if someone is walking in that particular road yes they may you know may uh, they may not uh, they may meet with an accident or they may uh, you know get stuck in the traffic and that's what we feel but it may not be true all the time so in bangalore especially if i'm going from vasvangudi south part of bangalore to say uh, marathahalli so always like people say yes it will take around 2 hours but most of the time i have seen that i have reached early probably i have reached sometimes in 40 or 50 minutes even in the you know busy hours so always like whatever we have felt we have sensed earlier so we feel that this is what will going to happen but most of the time it may not happen right so the further in terms of attributes to perception so here you can see that raw data as i discussed earlier the information with experience what we have the information so far what we have experienced and a mental process like is unseen but affected by things you have not seen that but sometimes you have felt it and accordingly what you do is you make your own conclusion 
and the last is the end product or perception sensing or interpretation of our experiences so whatever the information we have we start you know doing analysis in our own way and whatever the final product or the way we experience so this is how the overall perception forms so friends like now you can get the clarity that yes this is the first part like this is the first way means uh, when in, when any of the stereotypes you know forms when you perceive it after that if you are uh, thinking on it again and again try like whenever you get the time and uh, whatever the situation you you know you are in if you are doing it 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 becomes a strong stereotypes and further we will understand there is a one more step after perception how it gets converted into stereotypes. So it is very interesting as I told you earlier while describing uh, overviews. So it is self-fulfilling prophecy. So here the person influencing the behavior of another person by actions related to his or her expectations. So always, always like most of the time in corporate sector it happens. It happens where like you know seniors when it comes to their subordinates and whatever they have expectations or in terms of their experience they expect like subordinates should do in a similar way so always they influence and here the further like concept of self-fulfilling prophecy so individuals individual holds the expectation that an event will occur means always if in terms of workplace yes the seniors have that expectations like it may occur and believing that expectation is correct, uh, individuals engage in a course of action causing the event to happen, proving their expectations are accurate. And most of the time it may not happen, but most of the time it may. So always it is like say chance factor. So we have something in our mind, say for example, I can take a, an example of a client of mine and uh, you know she was working in New Zealand. Uh, she used to work in New Zealand for, she has worked around uh, 8 to 10 years uh, in uh, say in terms of uh, hospitality sector and after that due to some reasons yes she you know I get to India once again and uh, here she used to work in health, uh, health services. She was into one reputed MNC so there she used to see lots of you know you know we can say cultural differences but still she used to feel that Yes, whatever I have experienced in New Zealand, the same things might happen. And she used to, you know, project that. But most of the time, there will be due to this cultural differences. She used to get like, you know, uh, anth she used to get into antagonistic situations or where like her uh, colleagues or uh, subordinates or seniors like used to oppose it. So whatever the expectations used to set, so always most of the time it uh, usually it uh, doesn't used to sink whatever she used to have expectations with that. So self-fulfilling prophecy is always we, we feel that whatever we have the beliefs, whatever we know it is right and it is going to happen. So how it happens? So if here you can see a cycle. The first is in terms of say individual expectations. So individual expectations which it further leads to action based on expectations. So individual expectations, it might be in terms of say, now in board of directors or in terms of say managers, with their subordinates always they have expectations. Yes, if someone, there is a project and that project will get over within a month and it requires say around 50, you know, manpower employees. But when it comes to when you ask like the person who is uh, handling or who is heading that project probably he may say no it requires two months and we require 100 employees manpower for that but always there will be a expectations and as you know if you have this experiences with regard to project handling we can relate it the way lot of you know issues arises the conflicts and the way it happens and they get pushed no we have done this earlier and it is going to happen and they have their own you know methods but sometimes it may work or it may not but still they feel that it will going to happen and it will be always based on the action you know 
action based on expectations means it will go to the 50% of that overall project will go to complete in 15 days and remaining we will going to do that you know execution part and we'll give the, the client for extra time where we can find the issues and accordingly it will going to happen but actually the real things may not be different uh, may not be same but once we have that expectations always be set with that action based on our expectation and further that behavior is reinforced means if you feel that yes it has happened in one month then we feel like yes this is what exactly it is so we will not understand why it has happened but still we will feel yes, it has happened and whatever happens in future uh, which your projects will going to get yes still chances are there we may complete in 28 days right and further what happens you know expectations brings about results proving expectations are accurate. so this is how this overall cycle forms individual expectations this expectation based on you know action based on expectations then behavior is reinforced and further once it has been proved the same cycle happens and most of the time it may not but still we continue with that belief so I hope now you started uh, recalling your experiences so here in terms of say in terms of leadership or in terms of uh, say uh, at your personal life so always we have this expectations even in terms of you know colleagues or in terms of if you're married spouse children or your in-laws family members once we set this ex expectation and once we believe that and we feel we feel that even others can do it that's what what we uh, discussed in terms of self-fulfilling prophecy it is the person influencing the behavior of another person by actions related to his or her expectations so always we start influencing others with this so here you can see in terms of the competencies or the leadership styles here I would like to uh, discuss about two different uh, styles the first thing is friendly and competent and how it is related to self fulfilling, uh, fulfilling prophecy so friendly and competent you can say when it comes to say an individual can and here friendly and competent here the first thing is it is a dichotomy and where the individual cannot be friendly as well as competent so the, the person has to be friendly or else or competent so here you can say in terms of uh, uh, com the person if it is friendly and competent the one type you can say competent and cold or you can say competent and friendly so either of the ways the person has to be it can't be both so here when it comes to self-fulfilling prophecy uh, always on the basis of the experience most of us we expect like if someone is competent and they might be friendly as well or else if someone is friendly yes, we may can do that and when this expectations are not happening that stereotype forms and whatever we have experienced whatever we have sensed on that basis we draw out a conclusion oh this is what it is means this person can do or this lady can do this or she cannot do it and the next is there's a one more style which is agentic as well as versus communal so when it comes to agentic it is like more of say task oriented and it focuses more on like the person will be focusing more on outcomes task oriented results oriented pushy aggressive in terms of agentic behavior and whereas communal communal is always focused on group dynamics and the process of decision making always going along with the people being in the team being the group and having the consent of each and every team member yes we the focus on uh, decisions so here once again it's a dichotomy where agented person can't be in terms of communal or communal can't be agentic if someone is more of extrovert yes he most of the time will be extrovert and if someone has the leadership qualities more of like you know pushiness they may not be so this is what like on the basis of the research 
so far. Uh, this is what we can see. And here you can, you can uh, try to recall if you have, if you know, uh, you know, your colleagues or people around who possess this kind of styles. And further, uh, here uh, I would like to now uh, show you one video. So here I'll be sharing uh, one link uh, of YouTube. So just I want uh, you to copy this link and paste it in your URL if possible. If you are able to copy it or just I request you to type this in YouTube. So the duration of this uh, video is 6 minutes 10 seconds. So we'll be having around uh, say 7 minutes. I'll be giving 50 seconds extra. Uh, after seven minutes, I'll be starting uh, the presentation. And here, just I want you to make a note of uh, in this video what are you going to perceive, what you're going to understand, so that what we have discussed so far in terms of stereotypes, in terms of say perception and self-fulfilling prophecy, just you can see here in this video. Now I request you all to. Uh, if possible, copy this or type this in your URL in a separate tab. screen. I'll be playing this video now. Go. 
a lot of women in your department. What's wrong with one more? Did you ever hear of a straw that broke the camel's back? They're good workers. Accurate, quick to catch mistakes, a lot of patience. Yeah, yeah, but that comes out of books. I work with them, mister. I know what happened. What does happen? It's a long story. Come on now, tell me. What does happen? Maybe I've been misinformed. Not so long ago, you sent me a girl by the name of Myrtle Malloy. Remember? I remember. As per her qualifications, I have signed her to an inspection bench. Well, in a matter of days, that bench looked more like her dressing table. And then came the day when... Uh, Joe, will you take your stuff back to table nine? That'll be your bench for the time being. Okay, Chief. Uh, Myrtle... We're moving you to table number 10. Is something wrong, Mr. Bradshaw? No. No, nothing's wrong. We just need this space for something else. Well, I sure hate to give it up. It's been a nice place to work. The light's good here and nicely situated right in the middle of things. I just began to feel at home. Well, I'm sorry, Myrtle, but table 10 will have to be your work area for the time being. You mean there's liable to be another change? There's always that possibility. Well, I certainly hope I'm not moved every other day. With man, no trouble at all. Tell him what you want and he does it. But with Myrtle, a little move is a big production. Okay, okay. Now, wait a minute. You ask me, now let me tell you. Now, here's another problem. Oh, Mr. Bradshaw, I wanted to tell you that the date is set for my marriage. I'll be leaving soon. Marriage? I thought you just got engaged. Well, I told you about it six months ago. We were only waiting until we could find a place to live. Six months ago? Brother, well, how soon are you leaving? Oh, the end of next week. Well, that'll really put us in a bind around here. It takes time to break in a relief, girl. Yes, I know it does. I wonder... Why didn't you say something? I didn't realize you were getting married right away. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Bradshaw, but, but I really thought you knew. We've all been talking about it. Okay, Brad. How many blushing brides do you have? Besides, what's all this got to do with Dolly, the new girl? She's already married. And she's a qualified marriage inspector. You know what I was doing when that new girl came in a few minutes ago? Oh, I was trying to cope with one of the biggest problems of all, Walt. Now, in your books, it comes under the general heading of absenteeism among women employees. Yesterday, I spent an hour and a half teaching one of our girls what she needed to know in order to start on the oscilloscope today. This morning, she gives it here. So I had to use somebody else. Now, I don't think the girl we got on it now ever can pick it up. So I'll probably have to find somebody else. Question. All these things you've been talking about, marriage, absenteeism, personality problems, aren't they really just a part of life? Part of a woman's life, maybe. I can remember the good old days when there were all men in my department, and we didn't have these problems. You didn't have the production output you've got now either. Look, Brad, you've got a new bearing inspector who happens to be a woman. You need someone, and there isn't a man available. It seems to me that whether the gal adds up to trouble or not is pretty much for you. <laughs> Uh, well, so it was a wonderful uh, video it was. Uh, so here, this I would like to expect, so here I'm expecting from you all to make a note of it. So soon after the completion of this uh, uh, presentation, webinar, you can say at the end, then we'll have a discussion, time for discussing it for your questions. So they just, I would like to know your views. So, according to you, what, what is the Brad's problem? Why he was not comfortable working with women? Uh, well, so here, uh, with this, now we'll move to 
the next uh, section as i told you earlier uh, will be will be focusing on ceos uh, of uh, 500 fortune uh, companies so here the first ceo one of my favorite uh, marisa maya ceo yahoo and she happens to be the first uh, you know female engineer to google before joining yahoo and if you see if you are aware of her overall leadership styles and what all she has done so far in terms of changing the work culture of yahoo and uh, if i'm not wrong she happens to be the first uh, say ceo to stop work from home and with that many companies they followed and she was feeling that yes working from home it may not help employees to have that understanding and accordingly she has done many things where she has fired most of uh, the top most you know managers and whatever she did after joining it was totally different it was totally different from the past yahoo's culture so according to her the leadership style she says it is more of be a multitasker and always have the proper communication and for her it is like deadlines in terms of say being whatever you have the task it should be completed on time and along with that you should be prepared for the next so it is always like you can say more of i'm saying i'm pointing towards like being a task oriented more of results oriented so this is the one example in terms of marisa maya one of the ceos and next in the kenwi so ceo and chairman of the board of directors pepsico and uh, as uh, you know that she stays in us and she works there uh, the for her the challenges or obstacles so like there are two major ob obstacles were there in spite of that now you can see like she is a ceo and chairman the first was she was asian american minority group I means she is from asia and she's from india and she is working there so this was the first obstacle hurdle for her working with americans and you can see in terms of prejudices or stereotypes what usually we have about different countries and the next is it was immigrant to the united states so from india is yes, immigrant so with this two obstacles you can see that still she could able to manage and uh, in one of the interviews she stated that yes she used to work closely for her like what is the secret what made her to be in that in this position so she used to work closely with her say predecessors and in terms of say and always she used to get acknowledged like it is always it is not only being technical like whatever the problem you have you technically you're going to you know uh fit it or in terms of troubleshooting she used to always plan for the next in terms of strategies like what next now this is a problem yes you fixed it what happens if the similar kind of problem you face for the next time once again you'll be spending the same amount of time so she used to come out with some strategies where she used to you know instead of spending a lot of time on that somehow she used to utilize and she used to complete that in a less time and next she says being visible is incredibly important so being a woman and that to working there so for her being visible always be visible express yourself and make sure you are taking everyone into account this what uh 
it's her kind of you know leadership style. And the next, people need to know that CEO cares about them. Means she she says that yes, CEO is there, and you, the your employees should aware of yes, CEO is looking after the employees. So there should be a proper communication. That's what she says. This is another success factor for her. And having a realistic vision of the world, understanding what is happening, what are the market conditions, and accordingly set the expectations. So this makes, or this will going to unblock all those blocks or barriers, and you can have a very, you know, clear communication with the employees. And next, it says like. in terms of uh, willingness like she always says if you're working and you are at home so when you are at home yes you spend time and most of the time you'll be happy but when it comes to your work she says that you are investing your time at work so make sure you enjoy it don't focus only on working without no enjoyment so it's not going to give you any outcome you may earn you may earn a position but you not be happy and once again it may affect the overall group team in which you are working so for her enjoyment is a priority along with that work so whatever you do you enjoy it so in terms of her competencies like her style it is more of team work or in terms of persuasion like how you influence with a clarity what all the expectations are there and what are the information she used to have a clear message and not but the least in terms of her style it is having a sense of fun enjoy so in terms of this is what the overall you know about uh, competencies of indra kenwi now the next here we can focus on carly uh, purina so she was ex ceo of hp and uh, for her it was more of say being aggressive being pushy and whatever you have in your mind she used to say do it so her competencies were totally different and uh, further she says when it comes to work life balance there is no work life balance as such here you need to choose what you want but if we go back to indra ki uh, indra ki nuis uh you know style of leadership or in terms of her overall you know uh personal style she used to focus on having a balanced like say balance between work and life but for her no you can't have a work life balance what you can have is what you want so select either work or in terms of your personal life so this here you can see in spite of having different views different styles but still they were able to reach that position so this is the one difference what i would like to explain here and the other things like she was very clear what she was doing it might be in terms of being a risk oriented being in terms of pushy aggressive taking her decisions she say yes i am clear this is what i am but when it comes to indra kenoi it may not be the case might be totally different she used to prefer more of being like taking decisions in terms of team in terms of group a collective decisions you can say and further what clary says is when it comes to say the leadership qualities even she says that one thing is common in most of the ceos is communication having a clear communication whatever you expect whether you are being really pushy aggressive or being more of friendly or in terms of following rules regulations we really call it as consent as or compliance but you need to communicate that message be clear and further she says it is really good it is what she states is 
the ability to collaborate with others, the ability to communicate clearly and the ability to see the forest and not get lost in the trees. So ability to see the forest and not get lost in the trees, here she says always look on a big picture. Don't get distracted or in terms uh, in terms of spending more time on facts and figures like always you say I need this I want all the facts and figures then I'll go to take decision in this what may happen is you may procrastinate you may not complete the things in a given point of time right so this is what all about Carly Fiorina then the last but not the least, Kiran Majumdar Shah, Chairman and Managing Director of Biocom. So by profession she is a brewer, she is studied in Australia, but after many hurdles as she faced and like at those days in 70s and 80s, so there were stereotypes like women can't be brewer and uh, then she relocated to different places, she worked in different countries. And for her, in terms of the leadership style, she says, do not make judgment on things, uh, people or issues with half and inform, uh, half information. So for her, it is whenever you make decisions, judgments, always have all the information and you make it. So you just you can see the differences now in terms of the. Uh, ex CEO of HP, what she said is like for her it is always focus on you know big picture and most of the time take decisions quickly. But when it comes to Kiran Mazanam uh, Shah, it is more of like be patient, understand each and every aspect, take into consideration all the factors, then you take the decision. So. Once again here you can see the differences in terms of their leadership style, but still they are. So here even I can uh, share you a few examples of few more leaders, say Stu Jobs. Stu Jobs, his style in Apple, it was very aggressive. These are like used to take instant you know, make some instant decisions and if he used to fire someone, yes, he used to do that. And always he has his own, you know, style of delivering the things, whatever the expert says, most of the time he used to deny and whatever he used to feel right, the experts has to do. So in spite of being so much pushy and blunt, you can see that he created that empire, Apple. And now there is one more example of Narayan Murthy in process. So if you see his style, it is totally opposite, damn opposite. So here he used to take decisions collectively, he used to focus more on following rules and regulation, going in the process, not to take hasty decisions, not to take risk without ascertaining like what will be the outcomes without having facts and figures. Still you can see he has created an empire in forces. So friends what I'm trying to say is always these people they followed what they liked, what they are. So in terms of the competencies so the first thing is, yes, you need to understand yourself, who you are, what you are, what are the skills, competencies you possess. This gives you a clarity about yourself. It is as simple as if you are standing in front of a mirror and what happens, the mirror reflects. So what you are, according, it, it reflects, right? Same thing happens in terms of the leadership, you know, style. What you are, accordingly, you're going to get 
out from other people. Right? They, they, this is the way they are going to communicate with you in a similar way. If yourself you are confused, if you, you are not thorough of yourself, like what are the traits you possess, so obviously if you start pretending someone else, if you feel that yes, I am a follower of Steve Jobs and whatever he did, I will be doing. So probably it will not work for you because it was his competencies, it was his style. When you start doing that, the first thing is you will go into push yourself, you will go into pressurize yourself. The moment you start pressurizing, you will go to consume lot of energy and at the end of the day, your energy comes to you. Get you start feeling exhausted. It happens when you start pretending someone else. So the first thing is understanding yourself more. It will be once you do this, it will be easier for you to understand others. So there you can see in terms of the stereotypes, once you are clear about yourself, yes, chances are there, you will go to decrease the intensity of you seeing others with those stereotypes and chances are there even you can decrease the intensity of you getting stereotypes from others. So now we are at the end of this uh, presentation. So we will be focusing on uh, learning. The first thing what I would like to tell and what we learned so far is communication, communication, communication. So the first communication here is knowing yourself. So usually we call it as intercommunication or intra communication. So intra is having communication with yourself. First you know yourself. The more you know it, it will be easier for you to know others. If you have some inhibitions in terms of the stereotypes, always you see others with those stereotypes and even though they are not, still you start believing that. The next is communicate with others. And the third communication is when you are getting a feedback, understand in a same way, not the way you want, which once again get stereotyped. So here uh, I can uh, refer you uh, one uh, activity and even we can uh, uh, read more uh, on this communication style. Uh, Johari window, J O H A R I, Johari window. So Johari window, there uh, it comes down a lot of things like what you can say it is there are four quadrants are there in that window. The first is I know myself and others know about me. The next is others only know and the third is I only know and the fourth is camouflage. So I think you can do this activity. With this you will get a lot of clarity about yourself. So whatever you do the next is knowing yourself is the first thing for you. And the next thing is defining your leadership style. Once you know yourself, make sure who you are, what you are and what exactly you are focusing on. So if you feel that you are really comfortable being extrovert, follow that. If you are really comfortable being pushy, follow that. Whatever you feel and understand it clearly first. The more you define your leadership, uh, leadership style, it will be easier for you to make others understand what exactly you are expecting. Right? And the third point is fitment with the organizational culture and values. So here in one of the you know uh, study conducted by uh, Dr. Raki, he is our company's founder. So uh, in his PhD thesis, so he found out like women who are the part of say managing you know board or in terms of uh, who are managers or who are in top most management who followed the founders style this is the founders like say Larryson Google uh, Apple, and whatever he has inculcated the style. If others are following, then there will be a group cohesiveness. Means everyone is going to sync and whatever 
people communicate yes they understand because already it has been set so this is a culture and there is values and at the time this gender stereotype may not work to that extent because already you are working in that culture and value so here it is identifying the culture and values if you are clear with your leadership uh, style and if you are clear it will be easier for you to understand companies so the few companies are there where you can see few companies are really you know uh, we can say aggressive and there are few companies they focus more on like you know people oriented go along with people the values are different so this is the one you know last part what i would like to say here as there are many other things are there which i have not covered so being very specific so that the things will be clear for us so these uh, these are the things uh, for you uh, now over to mr b s rao thank you